Police say Schuler forged a signature on her background check to get her daycare license and could now face up to three years in prison. The shooting here last night happened just around the corner from a drive-by that happened at this house last week. But because Solon didn't show up for court on Monday, she could face more criminal charges and more time in jail. Police say Leon Jankowski confessed to throwing a homemade bomb through this window and that he has a connection with the company. We looked back and I saw the whole thing happen and it it was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Rebecca Schilling and her family say she's lucky to be alive. In heavy snowfall, she left her friend's house in Randall late Tuesday night, but didn't make it very far. I started skidding, so I put on my brakes as I was turning, and then I got stuck in the ridges of the railroad tracks. Not having any luck, she called her mom and friend for help. I almost had it unstuck, and then he called me back. He's like, Rebecca, get out of the car right now. There's a train coming. <laughs> So Rebecca quickly got out of her car, grabbing a few belongings before the train came barreling down the tracks. I thought it was going to slow down or something. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I know trains can't slow down. It dented in and then it just went flying. The train smashed into her Ford Taurus, dragging it along before it landed in this ditch and started on fire. The fire department arrived to put out the flames and Rebecca escaped with her life. As soon as it happened, I was like, oh my god, I could have been in there, and I'd obviously be dead. The vehicle never wins in these, so it was great that she was able to get out in, in a safe uh, with no injuries and, and is at home tonight uh, enjoying her evening. It just makes you appreciate everything more because, like, when you are so close to having your life taken away, you realize what you have and how lucky you are to be alive still. This thing is not normal. Roadkill is nothing new for Minnesotans, but one curious creature has people talking. We saw something in the middle of the road, and we knew it wasn't a dog or a cat because it didn't have hair. It just had a clump of hair, and all the rest of it was just white skin. Lacey Isles says she was driving near her home Monday on County Road 86 south of Alexandria when she spotted this mysterious mammal. Its ear was all misshaped. Like, to me, it looked like half human. Lacey soon posted pictures of the animal on Facebook, and rumors and speculation took off. It just shot out like wildfire. You know, everybody was putting it on their Facebook pages, and then their friends were putting it on their pages. Noelle Jones sent pictures to KSAX Monday, and after posting them on our Facebook page that night, more than 175 comments have been posted about the unusual animal, with guesses ranging from a skunk, badger, wolverine, wolf, or even proof of the mythical chupacabra. Folks in Alexandria Wednesday had their own ideas. First guess was a badger with like a case of mange, but then some other people were saying like a chupacabra. And after looking at some pictures, I was like, you know, it's possible. Kind of looks like a 10 year old wolf. Almost looks like a pig with paws, I don't know, or a wolf. It looks like a dog. And why do you say that? Because it is. DNR Area Wildlife Supervisor Kevin Cotts used the process of elimination to give his answer. It's got long, uh, five long front uh, claws on each of its front feet, which would be characteristic of a badger. Ran, you know, the pictures past a few other DNR folks that have a lot of trapping and or fur bear experience. and. And they all said, you know, it's hard to be 100% sure what it is, but it looks, if it's a Minnesota animal, it's probably a, a badger. But Lacey and just about everyone else can't be so sure. If you look at the top half, it definitely looks like a dog has kind of been torn apart, but I'm not sure what to make from the back part. It's a strange animal, and I hope we don't have any more around here. Well, you know how they do their government secret testing on animals? And I know it sounds crazy, but I've never seen an animal like this. I knew that'd be a devastation, but I didn't think it'd be anything like this. Thousands of turkeys are left shuffling through wood, metal, and feathers after a tornado hit Carlson Turkey Farms on County Road 6, north of Parker's Prairie. It's one thing to walk out the house and see uh, see the shop and trees gone, and then turn around and see this old barn uh, heritage uh, gone, and go past that to see Turkey barn's gone and uh, know what what the, the daunting task is. Terry Carlson built the farm with his family back in 1986, but says his age and high cost could keep him from starting over. Whether we rebuild or not, that's gonna really take some soul searching. 
Perry's insurance agent estimated the cost of the damages at more than $1.4 million. The three flattened barns held about 25,000 turkeys. Many survived and are being transported to a nearby farm place. Terry says his other farm place saw tornado damage in 2001, but it didn't come close to this. That was a year from hell. I don't know. That one won't even compare. But as the word spread, friends, family, and farmers came to help save the surviving turkeys and pick up debris. When, when people have a, something like this and you can help out, um, you know, and if you know them, even if you don't know them, I mean, if you, 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 you just feel that urgency to come out and help. I just want to thank my community for, for helping us out and taking care of us. Proud to live in a, uh, a community like this.